Is there anyone in here today interested in growing closer to the Lord? Is that why you're here? How many of you are here to appease your guilty conscience? You want to grow closer to the Lord. Anybody here ever see someone you admire that's serving the Lord and you think, man, they must have a secret access code to get into the presence of God. You know, here on my key ring, I have a little, a little, uh, what do you call that little pod, that little key, key fob? Yeah, whatever it is. And I can get in all the doors. Now, some staff members can only get in the elementary building. Some can only get in the high school building. Some can't get into the administrative. I got a key pod that can get me. Is it a pod? But you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Just give me my dog back. <clears throat> I can get in any building. Matter of fact, I even have a, a remote that'll get me in all the gates. Then there's a lockbox on a new school building. I have the code to that. Now, many of our staff have much of that, but there's a few of us who have access to every door and every gate. Sometimes we look at people we admire in the Lord and we go, man, they just have special access to God. No, they don't. The Bible says, let us come boldly into the throne room of time of need. The problem with so many churches preachers and Christians is we make Christianity way more complicated than God does. My, pa my very first pastor, George Baker, whose wife lives in Louisiana, she watches this live feed from time to time. He said this to us, a bunch of young baby Christians who were born again during the Jesus Revolution Many of us still look like we were hippies. And he said this, and it, it's just deeply ingrained in me. He said, you're as close to Jesus as you want to be. So we're going to address that this morning uh, because my question to you is, do you or are you walking like an Egyptian? Now, Egypt, as we know in the book of Exodus, uh, represents a world system, a tyrannical system, actually, a governmental system, a social system, a system of enslavement of God's people. Yet, though, Egypt is a representation of the world, the world you and I are living in. And we are not called to live like the world. You know, the scripture says, be in the world, but not of the world. My pastor said, you're as close to Jesus as you want to be. Well, I want to be close to Jesus, don't you? And I want to be closer to Jesus than I am today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, it says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of of that which is in Christ. This is not going to be the most theological, most intellectually challenging message you've ever heard. You say, well, I've heard you several times. That would go for almost every message you preach. <laughs> I'm not here to appease you intellectually. I want to allow the Spirit of God to impart to you the Word of God and give you an opportunity to mix your faith in it and watch it change your life. Don't be removed from the simplicity of this gospel. It's simple, yet we are masters at making it difficult. Jesus was a master teacher who was masterful in taking the deep, complex truths of the Word of God and of God Himself and making it so simple, even a farmer or a student or a child or you or I could understand it. But Christianity is not about understanding God mentally on God and intellectual level. It's a heart-to-heart -heart thing. So let me just break it down in very simplistic terms. We've talked about sheep this morning. You probably heard this statement. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck. What is it? It's a duck. If it walks like a duck, Quacks like a duck, it's a duck. May I ask you, 
If you walk like an Egyptian and talk like an Egyptian, what are you? Probably an Egyptian. You know, in scriptural terms, we'd call it carnal or immature. Or in some worldly terms, we'd call it hypocrisy. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So my question to you is, how are you walking? And if you don't like the results of your life and how you're living and the choices that you're making, perhaps you need to own the fact that you might want to make some different choices or maybe implement some new strategies to get some new outcomes. Because we know, uh, we've been told, I've told it to you, you've said it. The definition of stupidity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And if you don't like your harvest, plant different seeds. So if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, probably a duck. Let me just put it in this context, since we're talking about harvest. Driving here this morning, where I live, we have several illegal immigrants. Canadian geese. (laughs) And there were two long-necked Canadian geese walking up the street. And so I had to go around them. And when I did, there were about 12 little gooses, geeses, goslings. I know what I'm saying. (laughs) Just give me my dog back. (laughs) Well, y'all engaged this morning. (laughs) My point being, if you walk like a duck, quack like a duck, you get some more ducks. If you don't like your harvest, then you've got to quit planting the seeds that are bringing you the harvest you don't want. So Psalms 1, verse 1, a verse that you have heard if you've been here more than five times. Happy or blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sitters, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law does he meditate day and night. Everybody say meditate. Meditate. Day and night. We're not talking about sitting in a lotus position going, we're not talking about Eastern religion where you blank out. We're talking about meditating on the word of God that God has planted down in your spirit. And he's allowing that through your continual remembering and meditating on the word of God. You meditate on it day and night. And what is the result? Of this day and night. In other words, 24 7, 365 Christianity. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. Well, I don't believe in prosperity, then you have a problem. Because when you do what the Word says, the Word will do what God says the Word will do. And that will cause you to increase. Now, you don't, why, do you, why do you immediately, any of you, immediately jump to money? The love of money is the root of all evil. This is not just about a material thing. It's about everything. You'll prosper spiritually. You'll prosper in your mind, will, emotions, your intellect. You'll prosper even in your physical health because his word will quicken and make alive your mortal body. Hi, I'm Perry Black right here at Arkansas Christian Academy. Are you looking for a private, fully accredited Christian school for your children? Christian education has never, ever been more affordable than it is right now. Why don't you contact us right here at Arkansas Christian Academy and schedule a tour. There's all kinds of activities for your student as well as educational opportunities, and you don't want to miss out. So we look forward to seeing you right here at Arkansas Christian Academy. God bless. Listen to this. He'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf will not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The Word will produce the will of God in your life. Walks like a duck. Quacks like a duck. Hmm, Probably a duck. That you put off concerning the former lifestyle, the old man, which is corrupt according to his deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ooh, that's good. I'd like to be renewed in the spirit of my mind. 
and that you put on the new man, which is after God created in righteousness and true holiness. Oh, I'd like that. I'd like to have the outcome of the Word of God where I increase in every area of my life, spirit, soul, and body. I don't want to settle for less. I want whatever God wants for me. I want for you whatever God wants for you. But you have to want it. In the words of John Osteen, Joel's dad, how bad do you want it? I mean, it's an effort to get up and go to church. It's an effort to squeeze in on Wednesday. It's an effort to put into practice the things of God. How bad do you want it? I don't have a secret access code to God. I just do what works. Yes, sir. I had a friend came to me many years ago. We'd been married 51 years. We'd only been married 12 at the time, so it's been a while back. He came to me and he said, you know what? I'm on my third wife. I see you at church. I want what you got. Can you tell me how you get it? I said, absolutely, Larry. I can tell you. Every time the church doors are open, go. Every day, get up and just spend a few minutes with Jesus. And put God first in your life. He said, well, all right. You know how many times I've seen him in church since? Twice. He will quicken and make alive your mortal body. We saw our friends at the restaurant. I graduated junior high, praise the Lord, and high school with them. And here's how they walked to the car. I said, honey, do we look as old to them as they do to us? He'll make you alive. You saw Pastor Y? In his early 30s. You see how he stood up while ago and we were talking about laying carpet? He said, mm-hmm. <laughs> I laid carpet too. And yesterday afternoon, I laid on the porch for an hour and went to sleep. <laughs> Fortunately, it was the back porch. And my wife, I said, honey, I took a nap out there on the back porch. She said, like old people? I didn't care. If somebody's on the boat going across the lake and they see me laying there, that's okay with me. Because I didn't see them. (laughs) He will quicken and make alive your mortal body. He'll cause you to prosper, spirit, soul, and body. He'll cause everything you touch to prosper and increase, to be more than you had before, even though you continue to sow and to give. And I want to challenge you this morning. Go out there after service and help our foster families. Go out there and help our foster families. Give them a donation to send our children on a vacation, because many of our foster children never had a vacation before. And we're teaching our young people, if you, if you need something, you've got to do something. You don't live with a handout. We'll give you a hand up, but you've got to do something. So you know what they've been doing? They've been baking and cooking, making crafts. Plant a seed this morning. Be a blessing. And watch what God will do. Because I tell you, when you bless widows and orphans, God will get on you like ugly on an ape. <laughs> God will come on. I always say it like this. God's going to get you for this. Woo, and when he gets you, woo! Oh, 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 it's so good on the inside. It'll show up on the outside. Look how happy I am today. We laid all that carpet in one day. I thought it was going to take about two weeks. Oh, I'm feeling good up in the house. (laughs) We got to get that building done. We got hundreds of children wanting to come here. So they can have chapel every day. Be surrounded in a godly environment. Raised in the nurture and admonition of the Lord at home. And encouraged and challenged at school. Learning how to serve Almighty God. Does it work? Does it work? Come on, guys. Y'all go to this school. Does it work? Stand up and tell me if it works. Does it work? Does it make a difference? You're a graduate. You're an ACA graduate. Does it work? It works. <laughs> oh. We got to get that building done. We got to get that storm shelter done. You know why? We got a gym to build. We got a community to reach. We got a world crying out. Does anybody care about me, my family, my children? I say, yeah, up in the house. <laughs> get back to my notes. <laughs> Psalms 1 4 says, But the godly are not prosperous. It is not so. 
They're like chaff that the wind drives away. They'll not be able to stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the gathering of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Some of you may or may not know D. James Kennedy, pastor down in Coral Ridge, who's now in the presence of the Lord. He said it like this, tolerance is the last virtue of a depraved society. When you have an immoral society that has blatantly, proudly violated all of the commandments of God, there is one last virtue they insist upon. Tolerance for their own immorality. Be not conformed to the world. The world wants us to conform to their image. But you have been predestined in Jesus Christ to be conformed to his image. I want to be like Jesus. I want to love like Jesus. I want to live like Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1 says, According to his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who's called us to glory and virtue. Wherefore are giving unto us these exceeding great and precious promises. They're right here. This word is full of the promises of God. And God cannot break his word. Through these great and precious promises, we have been partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. The world is trying to get us to conform. Five simple principles, the simplest message you may ever hear. Five simple principles to your success, your growth, your maturity, your happiness, your prosperity, your health. Put your feet under a seat. Say that with me. Put your feet under a seat. <clears throat> well, you know, I believe I can go to heaven without going to church. Yeah, you can jump out of an airplane without a parachute, too. But the parachute helps. That's why the book of Hebrews, it's recorded in chapter 10, that we're not to forsake the assembling together of ourselves. Church is God's idea. It was not an idea to give me a job. It is so that God can do a work in us. Not one person in this place had been called to be the spiritual lone ranger. One to put a thousand to flight. Two to put ten thousand to flight. What about three? What about four? What about five? What about a hundred? What about five hundred? Our power is multiplied. And what we find in a church is people like you and me who are under construction who God declares holy, justified, sanctified, and righteous. And then we look at ourselves and go, man, God has a lot of faith (laughs) in his ability to complete the work he has begun. If you're looking for a church where everybody's got it together, keep on looking. If you're looking for a church where people are pursuing Jesus with a passion and loving the world with the desire for them to know the Jesus who saved us, who forgives us, who heals us, who delivers us, and who blesses us, you in the right place. As my pastor said, and I've said many, many times, if you're looking for a perfect church, don't go there. You will ruin it. (laughs) There are no perfect churches. None. But there is a perfect God who loves us even when we fall down. 
And he wants to have you in a seat. Get your feet in a seat. Reach out to people. There's a lot of hurting people out there. Some have just left the church that haven't left faith. But it's important to come together. See, going to church and not putting into action the principles of faith is like going to the gym but never working out. It's like going to the gym and never working out. There are some weights at the gym that are so big, they put big holes in it. There are a lot of weights in our lives, but there's holes in it. So we can get a hold and with the power of God, lift it up. We've been called not to become Christian philosophers and Christian intellects. Nothing wrong with intellect. Some of you have it. But we're called to be passionate pursuers of a relevant God who desperately desires relationship with us and to empower us to reach other desperate people groping in darkness. He's called us to be the light. He's called us to be the salt of the world. And what good is salt when salt has lost its saltiness? It's fit for the dunghill, the manure pile. Going to church and not putting into action the principles of faith. It's like going to the gym and just not working out. We went to Ollie's in Hot Springs two days ago. There's a gym just three doors down. I drove by. I looked good in the windows. <laughs> You're so vain. You probably think this message is about you, don't you? <laughs> See, I can go to heaven without going to church. Sure I can. But I need to be here. I need to grow in grace. I need to fellowship with other people on a journey. I need to be here on some days to encourage you. And I just tell you as a pastor, the fact that y'all come encourages me. Y'all fascinate me. Y'all just keep coming back. <laughs> Gluttons for punishment. Pastor, your jokes, I know, they hurt. They hurt. My brothers and sisters, because I've always joked around, even as a kid, I loved to make my mama laugh. And I'd, I'd crack jokes and I'd laugh at them. And my brother Paul and my sister Paula, they'd always say, Perry, quit laughing at your jokes. I said, well, they're funny. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to laugh at your own jokes. I said, Red Skelton, some of you yells, maybe don't know who I'm about. I said, Red Skelton laughs at his own jokes. I wouldn't tell you a joke if I didn't think it was funny. Some of you just need a sense of humor. Number two. <laughs> Number one, get your feet under a seat. In other words, we need you to be here. We need to bump shoulders with you. We need to bump elbows with you. We need to work side by side. We need to work out our differences. We need to work out our offenses. We need to work out faith that works. Number two, it's not enough just to come. You've got to feed your faith. This is one of the simplest principles just read three or four, maybe five chapters a day. And let me just say this. Instead of trying to figure out the ten-headed beast and the antichrist and AI, how about just starting the gospel of John? Amen. And just read three chapters a day. Take you, if you're a slow reader, take you five minutes, maybe, maybe ten. Instead of just trying to read it all, how about just saying, ooh, that is good. Mm. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth on him, whoever, ooh, I'm a whoever, who, ooh, mm. word up in the house, and just meditate on how much God loves you. Don't try to race through it. Gospel of John, what, 20 chapters? Take you a week. She said, well, I don't like to read. If I, if I take my phone or I take my iPad and connect with our Wi-Fi, I can go to these very verses and click audio Bible, and it'll read it to me. See, the, uh, Psalms 119, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. 
John 17, Jesus said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. (laughs) Number one, get your feet in the seat. Number two, feed your faith. Feed your faith. We're not called to conform to the world. And the world is beating on us continually, trying to get us to conform to them. We must not conform to the world, nor conform to each other. We are called to conform to the image of Jesus. And he wants a relationship with you. Feed your faith and grow in in grace. Surround yourself with those on the same mission as you. Anybody here want to grow in the Lord? All three of you. Anybody else? You want to grow in the Lord. You want to know more about his power and grace. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. How? By the way you live. I hope they're watching. We were at the barbecue restaurant in Hot Springs. And so I said, hey, i got to go over there and talk to him. We'll call him Bob, even though his name's Bill. So I ran over there. I ran over there, and he was getting up. He had a beer on the table, and he was getting up. And I said, oh, sit down. Sit me down. He said, no, we're leaving. We're leaving. And he couldn't hardly wait to get to the car because they know I'm a preacher. The wild, crazy boy from Central High School that did more things on stage that nearly got him thrown out of school. The one that misbehaved and behaved and joked around in class. The one that went off the edge and into the drug culture. He said, oh my God, it's par- I know what he was thinking because I used to think the same way. He's going to come over here. He's going to sit down on this bench and start telling me about Jesus and I'm going to Oakland. <laughs> I felt that bothered somebody right over here. <laughs> Are y'all done yet? I'm not. Number four. What was number three? Who knows? You got to grow in grace. You got to grow in grace. I'm not out to make anybody feel bad or make anybody feel condemned or make anybody feel guilty. What I want to do is somehow with this crack pot, this jar of clay, Challenge people to be so filled to the brim with him that your cup overflows. And they can't deny the grace of God that's working in and through your life.